Hello everyone and welcome back to J1 Aviation. So on this channel we'd like to review a couple questions from the FAA private pilot test prep. Today's questions are related to thunderstorms. So what we're talking about today is what are the necessary conditions for a thunderstorm to form? What are the stages of a thunderstorm? And what are some landing hazards when a thunderstorm is in the vicinity of an airport? So let's begin. Okay, so question number one. What conditions are necessary for the formation of thunderstorms? A, high humidity, lifting force, and unstable conditions. B, high humidity, high temperature, and cumulus clouds. Or C, lifting force, moist air, and extensive cloud cover. Okay, so the answer is A, high humidity, lifting force, and unstable conditions. So let's talk about why each of these are necessary for the formation of thunderstorms. The first one is lifting force. So thunderstorms need an initial boost to get the air rising. So this can be something like the local uneven heating of the Earth's surface in the summertime resulting in an air mass thunderstorm. Or it could be something like a front moving through which can produce widespread thunderstorms. So the first thing that it needs is a boost. And now that you have the initial boost of the upward movement of air in the atmosphere, this could die out unless the air is moist and unstable. So this is the other two answers. First you have the lifting force, then you have high humidity and unstable conditions. So unstable air means that a portion of the air is warmer than the surrounding air. So as it rises, even though it might cool, it will still be warmer and less dense than the surrounding air, allowing it to rise even further. That's the unstable air. As air is displaced, it will continue to move in that displaced instead of returning or staying in that displaced condition. So then the last one is humidity. So why is humidity important? Well, as air rises, it cools. Now this cools the water vapor in the air and as the water vapor, water vapor cools to the dew point, it will then turn the water vapor into liquid. Now this condensing process of water vapor to liquid releases latent heat into the air, which in turn continues to fuel the thunderstorm because now it is warming the air and the cycle continues. So it goes back to the previous step of warming the air and which will make it less dense and will allow it to continue to rise. Okay, so next question. During the life cycle of a thunderstorm, which stage is characterized predominantly by downdrafts? Cumulus, dissipating, or mature? Okay, so the answer here is B, dissipating. So thunderstorms have three stages of a life cycle. First is the cumulus stage. This is a stage of the previous answer where it begins with a lifting action. If sufficient moisture and instability are present, then the clouds will continue to grow. Uh, now because the updrafts in this stage are quite strong, the water vapor that has condensed the liquid is presented, <laughs> prevented from falling to the ground and will continue to rise. Now eventually this lifting action won't be able to support the weight of all this liquid water anymore and then it will start to fall to the ground. So when it starts to fall to the ground, this is when the mature stage begins. So you still have the lifting action, but then you also have the downward motion of the rain and all the air that it's pulling down with it. So as you can imagine, this is the most violent stage of thunderstorm. The continuing rising and falling of air can create violent turbulence in and near the thunderstorm. So on the ground, you can feel this downrush of air and the surface wind will increase um, and the temperature, of course, will decrease. So this actually feels good in the summertime on those warm, humid days when you're on the ground. You have the thunderstorm approaching and you feel the nice rush of cool air come in. So it's kind of neat to think like just a few minutes before this, that air was literally miles up in the sky. So the thunderstorm will have reached its maximum height during the mature stage. And this height could reach into the stratosphere where the air is very cold and very stable. So once the updrafts reach this layer, they can no longer build into that stable air mass. And then they start to spread out horizontally across the top. And this is that familiar anvil shape 
that you might remember when you're looking at a picture of a thunderstorm. So interestingly enough, the anvil layer is blown with the upper level winds. So in some ways, it's basically a pointer letting you know which way the thunderstorm is moving. And then you finally have the dissipating stage. So after about 30 minutes from when it all started, the precipitation and the downdrafts now spread throughout the lower levels of the air mass. Sensor spreading out over the bottom. Um, it's killing that source of the updrafts which it, which it needs. It needs that heat and moisture from the surface layer to continue fueling the thunderstorm. So this dissipating stage spells the end of the thunderstorm. And you know, the downdrafts spread out, they replace all the updrafts, and then this dissipating stage ends our little story about a thunderstorm. Two garden, uh, uh, number one, Alpha radio check, please. Okay, so the very last question for today. If there is thunderstorm activity in the vicinity of the airport at which you plan to land, which hazardous atmospheric phenomena might be expected on the landing approach? Precipitation static, wind shear turbulence, or steady rain? So the answer here is wind shear turbulence. So remember, because of all the downdrafts of the thunderstorm, the turbulence can extend well beyond any visible cloud formation. You know, large thunderstorms should be cleared by at least 20 miles in the air to prevent a buffer from the hail which could be thrown out of the thunderstorm and all of the severe turbulence around it from all of the different downdrafts coming out. So when landing with a thunderstorm in the vicinity of the airport, you should expect some wind shear. So there you have a little refresher on thunderstorms. Now next time you see one, you can picture all of the different things that are happening within a thunderstorm. So thanks everyone for riding along today. We'll hope you join us on a future flight and thanks for flying J1 Aviation.